Often when we talk or think about the homeless, we think about adults or sometimes families. But one local ministry has been called to rescue kids, children, living alone on the streets of Charlotte and beyond. My name is Noah Abbas, and this is my story. I am from Iraq, and uh, in 2007, we moved to Syria because the lack of jobs in Iraq, uh, we were really poor. Two years living in Syria, we came to the U.S. as refugees. We all lived in one apartment. Uh, it was the eight of us. And uh, the only thing my parents were looking for at that time were jobs and just uh, surviving here. Things started to change all when uh, my mom got really homesick after being here for two years. Uh, bought the plane tickets for the entire family, except my dad and I and uh, they all left back. A few months after, my dad decided to go back to Iraq and leave me with one of his friends. He convinced me that it would be a quick trip, a week, two, no more than that, and then he would be right back here and then we'll live together. That didn't happen, of course. The story of Jeremiah, chapter one. Jeremiah, who, who's there? The Lord your God, Jeremiah. I want you to be my prophet. To go to my people and tell them that I am angry with their evil ways. Leaving into, into the wild was a chance I favored over being abused. Although my dad didn't know he was a bad man, this friend of his, and I couldn't take any more of that. And I was old enough, 11, about to be 12. Old enough to know that, you know, things could get worse. All my life, my dad has told me that Islam is the right religion and is the only true religion. I did think to myself that if, my, if God is what my, my dad talks about, I mean, I'm safe, I will be fine. However, uh, that changed really quickly the next day when I reached to my people, the ones I knew, the ones my dad had called friends, and they didn't get back to me. You know, when you're in trouble, you turn to the people you know most. When you're desperate, you turn any other way. And so it was a man named Jonathan I had known from a group called Boys Club. And so a few hours later, he shows up and says, hey man, this is what I did. I emailed all the pastors I know. And I heard through an email that there was a kid living in a car on Central Avenue, and so I said, where is the kid? Everybody was talking about, let's pray for him, and I said, let's go find him. And he said, uh, I hear that you need 
of help, and I am willing to give that to you. I am willing to give you a house to, to sleep in, take you to school in the morning, buy you clothes, food, whatever you need. Does this offend you? Is this some place? Because Jesus was all over the walls, and we knew that we wanted to respect that, and he said, no, I, I want to live here. And um, we just allowed God to be God, and we didn't push anything on him. And, and we said, if you come here and experience this, you decide for yourself. And in return, I don't want anything. You know, it's, it's, this is what I believe in, what is right. This is my God telling me to do this. I will never forget that it was a Wednesday, and the next day was a Thursday, and 1-7 is known for their Thursday night's life. And then put her on the person next to you. Let's make a nice connected circle, please. Hug each other so you'll be warm. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, what 1-7 is, if you haven't heard, uh, we got the name from the Bible, from Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7. God has chosen Jeremiah like any other prophet he's chosen. and. Uh, Tell them that it's time. The reason why I formed you and set you apart, and uh, that purpose is to go out and speak for me. And Jeremiah, like any of us would do right now, and gave many excuses of why he can't. I'm too young, I can't speak. And then God told him all that he had for him and the plans and the great things that he will do through Jesus. And so this is what we try to do all by being little Jeremiah's and growing up to be great leaders in the future. So thank you for being here, and I hope you feel welcome in just a sec. Welcome to our seven, Marshall! Welcome to our seven, Marshall! Lord, I pray that you just bless this food. Amen. We would have dinner as the one really big family, and then do small groups, and after that worship. But it was in a small, really small group is when I heard uh, about Jesus for the first time. And the youth leader was sharing uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So this is Eminem. He is uh, one of our U13 players. So I was born in Africa, Tanzania. My mom told me when I was small, my dad, um, he left me um, when I was two years old. He went to South Africa. So I didn't even get to, to see my dad. Just questions came in from all over. If Jesus was for real, why would he, why would he take your dad from you? Since Allah is not for real. And if Allah is not for you, that means Jesus is. And that means Jesus was in power this entire time. Why would, why would he allow my dad to leave and leave me with this man? So there was a cousin. His name is David Mbuyu. I think most of the people know him. So he bring me here one seven. Then I see how more people uh, show love to me and I learn more stuff about God. And I'm thankful for one seven and my family and all God gave to me. When I compared those questions to the love people were showing me, I was blown away. And every time I was shown love by the people at one seven, by the staff. One, hold this one. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> when I see a faith like that that everything he's doing, he wants the reflection back to Jesus Christ, all the glory to him. It was obvious right there in front of me. And so uh, I knew at that time that I should really give my life to Christ. So I did. And today I want to, I don't know, just prove to the world that I'm one of his sons. Amen. I just want you to know that we love you and based on what you have professed to all these people, 
and your love for Jesus. And I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I met Anam and Noah about two years ago, and their father and mother were homeless. And then they decided to leave Noah here in America and go back to Iraq. Living with Anam has changed our lives. Every night, she comes in, I'm in the living room, and she asks if we can pray together. I don't have to tell you I'm proud of you and where you've come from, you and Noah both. <laughs> based on your profession of faith and your love for Jesus. And I know that you love him because he's changed your life. I baptize you in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was nothing that we were doing. It was definitely the power of God and the passion that they have to be disciples of Jesus Christ and to share about him to the world. Like every day, they're begging us for more opportunities to share, for more opportunities to serve. They know the cost. When their father and mother return, they could be beaten, they could be disowned. We don't know what's gonna happen. And so in two months, we will be praying for God to protect and to provide and for him to do yet another miracle in their lives. When he came back, I had to gather up the courage to do the most uh, hardest thing in my life, which was stand up to my dad and tell him the real reason why I don't want to go back to my family. I always knew my dad loved me. My mom did too. And so we had this relationship. You know, I'm hurt here, but I'm getting boosted up and cheered up that I did the right thing, that I took this really big step that nobody's ever done here at this ministry, and especially not from a Muslim background. And I didn't believe my dad when he said, I disown you, but it's crazy that this was 2014, August, and I have maybe spoke to him once ever since. So it's been really hard when it comes to the relationship I have with my dad. The true meaning of baptism and what it meant to me was that everything you leave when you go under that water, it's dead in the past, and you're raised, and this is, this is a new chance to a new beginning, a new life. I really took what it meant to be baptized and what it meant to be owned by Jesus, and that your father, the love he has for you, you know, no other earthly dad could give that to you, could offer you that. That did fill the hole, the hole that my dad had left in my heart when he abandoned me. And uh, Jesus is enough. And because of Jesus being enough, forgiving my dad was, was possible. So are you nervous? Are you scared? What are you feeling? I'm not nervous at all, man. Uh, I think it's gonna be fun. Now that I have been away from my family, from my blood family, for quite some time, uh, is getting a lot easier because of, of the people that I'm surrounded with and be, because of the people that I now truly call family. So, so yes, absolutely, I do have a family here at 17. 
even without the adoption, even without him having a legal guardianship of me, he, he had won this trust in my heart that this man is my, is my dad, he is my father, and this is what I present him as to others.